Hello. 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 Hey, Manu. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hey. Hello. Golan Kev, what can you say? You know, <laughs> yes, the gift that keeps on giving. What kind of language is that? <laughs> as long as you do everything the Golan way, it works. <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome to the peer desk breakout call number seven, I think. Um, so let's start the call. Do we have any kind of updates? Please. Hi. Yes. Thank you. Um yes, so for free well. Um, actually, so when we ch change the 32 data colon subnets uh, to 128, it caused a kind of lot of, lot, lot of issues on Prism. Basically, we had a race condition when we had a lot of uh, ghosted subtopic and a very few nodes, like during, like in a kurtosis subnet with only two or three nodes. So, yes, we had a um, race condition. This race condition didn't uh, trade before. But now with uh, 128 peers, it's uh, used to treat not always, but quite often. Um, and so we, we were not able to uh, sync um, a full node. It was okay for super node, but not for full node. As well, we had issues um, where with initial sync because of that. So we were not able anymore to uh, start a node, not at Genesis, but after. Uh, this is fixed, uh, and the request is in review. Um, about also, we work on the data colon validation pipeline. Uh, before we had a multiple places in our code where, where we used to check if a data colon uh, was valid. Um, now, um, everything is centralized, we have only one pipeline, and this pipeline is used um, everywhere uh, across Prism. And also uh, with Kev here, uh, it's more, yes, with Kev, we have many work on, for us, um, of, on uh, the 
replacement of uh, C KZG library to by go by the Go KZG library uh, for Prism, and it seems very uh, promising. Uh, maybe Nishant has other thing to add, but for me, it's uh, that's pretty that. Yeah, so uh, one of the main things I've been focusing on is uh, measuring our data column uh, building performance in Prism. So over the past two weeks, when we have run Kurtosis DevNets, we've run into a lot of issues with block building. So uh, with a lot of help from Kev, uh, I think we managed to narrow it down to the CKZG library. So we're still not sure yet on why it's uh, so inefficient for Prism, but when shifting over to Go KZG, um, you know, Prism performs a lot better. The DevNet can run in a much more stable manner. So uh, I guess we'd have to look further on why that's the case. Um, do we, sorry, just to intersect, but maybe we can do that later, I don't know, shall we? But uh, do if if Go KCG fixes that, do you do we still care? Do we care why it didn't work with CKCG for academic reasons, or because you want to have CKCG as a fallback? Well, right now we use Go KCG by default, you know, so um, we can you can use CKCG in mainnet uh, with the flag, but you know by default. It was at Go KZG. So, but what we wanted we wanted to find out is that, um, like, why Prism can't perform to like an acceptable manner with CKZG, in the sense that just building the uh, cells and the proofs took, you know, like in the, in some worst case scenarios, it was like five to eight seconds, which is, you know, not reasonable. So with with Go KZG. Um, it, the numbers are a lot more reasonable, at least compared to the benchmarks that have been done. On why it has been uh, bad on our uh, on for Prism, we would uh, I, I pass uh, Kev some profiles that I took. Um, maybe he has some ideas, but yeah. Um, yeah, I guess it's just a personal curiosity for me as to why it's not working. Um, the PR the flag that switches between CKZG and GoKZG is currently in a PR. Um, Sounds so we good. We can yeah. discuss it more later. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, no star. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, tried uh, doing cutosis testing last week with other clients. So Lorsa Supernode to Lorsa is working, and uh, <clears throat> uh, but uh, we uh, so it was not successful. Uh, Lorsa was requesting, um, so it was not getting all of the uh, all of the data columns. Uh, so I, for example, tried Lorsa Supernode with. I think Tegu Supernode as well as Nimbus Supernode. I did not try it with Prism, uh, so I try. So I did that separately. So just two nodes, uh, DevNet on Kurtosis, and it was not work. It it didn't. It was not successful. I at least since both were Supernodes, it should have been successful. And uh, uh, so then there was uh, this change by Barnabas regarding. Uh, CSC in metadata, CSC type in metadata, and now uh, I think we need I need to revert it and uh, then maybe try with some other client that is uh, <clears throat> that is compatible, uh, and then basically move forward from there. Thank you. And. My host. Yep. Um, yes, Jimmy here. Um, so um, in the past two weeks, we've managed to merge our 
the DAS branch changes into our main branch. So we have everything on our unstable branch now. And we've also fixed a few minor issues um, with Electra. So we should be able to test Electra soon. Um, I think the code is ready. We just haven't tried um, testing to get us on Electra. Um, we've also updated our spec test to uh, to work with Alpha 5. That's all working. Um, we've got Metadata V3 implemented, so we have DevNet 2 ready, I think. Um, at the moment, um, for one's working on getting the next log per block configurable, and I'm, I'm hoping to get Checkpoint Sync working um, in the next week or so. Um, we've also worked on other, other small things like caging, error handling, so that's a small thing. Um, I've done a bit of testing on the fetch, fetching blob from EL test mentioned previously, um, so that um, the supernova can fetch blob from the EL and computer data columns um, on behalf of other other nodes. Um, I've tried testing that would increase blob count. Um, I tried 32 blob and tried 16 blob as well. Um, 32 seems seems like a bit of a stretch. I managed to have a few blocks created um, from um, proposed before that session deadline. And that was okay, but um, I think the open rail miss rate is pretty high. Um, it seems like 16 blobs seems to perform much better than the current uh, setup. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to do a bit more testing on this. Um, I think to have some results so we can think about having increased block count in the near future. But at the moment, it seems like the main uh, bottleneck is um, the computation time and the, the network bandwidth, but um, I think we're pretty close. That's all from Lighthouse. Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, so uh, the bottleneck at the moment is compute cells and KCG proofs. Is that correct, Jimmy? Uh, no. So uh, the, the, I, I think it's both the computation and the, the network bandwidth. Um, so that's going to uh, basically going to be how we decide how much blob count we're going to increase to. Um, sixteen blobs seems seems okay. Um, with some uh, with the machine that I was testing with, so I, I'm I'm keen to try out on some some more um low capacity machines. Um, to make sure that it also still works for like four cores and eight core machines. Um, okay, I see. So if we increase the thirty two blobs, um, I think the the time takes a bit longer, and we've got I it sometimes sometimes we'll miss some blocks, but um, sixteen blobs seems fine so far. In my testing. Okay. Okay, I see. Yeah, so we basically need to get the block uh, proposed and published within the four second mark. So, this, so the other other validators can attest to it. Right. Um, yeah, I guess we could possibly add in that flag for uh, parallelism because if you can spare like two to four threads, then um, the time to compute like 32 blobs then goes down quite a bit. Yeah, um, we're already doing, um, we're already doing parallel uh, processing um, at the blob level. I guess you're talking about like even more parallelization within the blob. Right. Yeah, I'm still not completely, this is sort of out of my expertise, but it seems like maybe the scheduler is doing something smarter if it has intra parallelism. Um, uh, I'm still not completely sure. Yeah. Thank you. And then, hey, cool. Yeah. Uh, we are working on two big tasks. Uh, first is uh, implementing for choice according to the spec with uh, data availability check. And we almost finished it, but maybe we are going to, to refactor it before merging. And the other thing we were working was uh, refactoring custody. Uh, it was too much prototype style before, and we want to make it more suitable for, for production. And also we had changes with custody subnet count uh, in ENR and metadata. Uh, that's all for Taiko. Thank you. 
uh, granting. Hello. Uh, so yeah, uh, the guy that was working on <laughs> field us from the fellowship uh, uh, program, he he got some progress, but he seems still cannot get a, <clears throat> cannot get Gradina to sync with uh, uh, with the rest of the clients. So so we will see. Depending on when the next DevNet uh, will start, we either will give him a bit more time, or otherwise we will just take over take this. Uh, uh this feature uh, and uh, we'll try to get it uh, get it ready for the devnet so yeah so so that the update is is not very uh happy now thank you and um in bus anyone from in bus here No, okay. Uh, so let's move to the definite discussion. Um, so since Barnabas can't make it today, so is anyone can anyone give a quick update of about what is the current status of definite two? Is this is this still alive? Um, I don't think it has been launched. I think. One of us was doing a bit of local testing and he ran into issues. I see. And um, at for DevNet two, are you using um, what what is the size of a uh, CSS CSC? Sorry. Um, I think uh, the latest discussions that we agreed that we're going to revert back to the previous um, U sixty four metadata. Um, right. I think once that PR is merged and then uh, everyone's implemented, we should be ready to uh, to up again. I see. So, uh, was did the definite two was uh, launched with uh sixty four, right? So it's there was no change of definite two at all. I mean, during the past two weeks. And, yeah. Um, so as as Jimmy mentioned, uh, DevNet two has not started. I think uh, we are still trying to get the local DevNets working with Kurtosis, and I think we there are we are hitting issues over that. And once the Kurtosis local DevNets uh, uh, basically we are able to run them successfully, uh, then it makes sense to go towards DevNet two. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so we have the PRs here, um, which is reverting the previous changes and also add more comments um, to clarify the, the type of ESC. So I think I will already got uh, many approvals there and if there's no objections then I will merge it uh, after this call. Oh good. Thank you. Okay, uh so I guess that's the latest definitely situation or do we have any other uh, topics to discuss around this night? I had a question um, as to what was the status of uh, just clients syncing with themselves. I think Barnabas had a message in the Discord about it. Um, so just starting up a DevNet and syncing just with your um, nodes one super node I think it was in one regular node so basically the testing uh, so the testing is happening in for example two three steps and the, one of the first step is that each client super node and normal node pair should be working in kurtosis and then basically we try 
other we try that with other clients that one one client uh, super node and another client as a normal node uh, so they are these kind of combinations that sort of we need to try before we need to move uh, move to devnet uh, so that is i think what barnabas must have posted about and uh, for example lorsa super node and lorsa normal node uh, kurtosis pairing is working and uh, and for me the next step was to try lorsa super node with some other client super node and obviously then with a super node one client super node and then a normal node and vice versa uh, so uh, basically i think these are the steps we are following and uh, so i am waiting for for example i first of all i need to include this uh, new pr 3908 and then i would like to try it with another client whose super node and normal node pairing is working uh, that that's the way basically we can move forward right. on this um, for alert star, does it do verific uh, verification? Um, I think I remember seeing just the compute cells and KZG proofs, but not uh, verif verifying like um, columns being done yet. So I think we have validation, uh, but we don't do reconstruction as of now. In my opinion, adding reconstruction is uh, is not really a big step. Uh, uh, so basically when I'll have some sort of, uh, so my focus right now is to make sure that there is some working, uh, uh, that uh, working configuration with other client and, uh, then basically I'll add the reconstruction step on it, but most probably we are doing verification, <clears throat> but if we are, we are doing the validation and, uh, I'll recheck although. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I might have just missed it then. Um, okay, cool. Um, oh, so it seems Prism is also the same. Is that also the same for Lighthouse? As in they can sync with um, a full node, Lighthouse full node, and a Lighthouse normal node? Oh, yeah. Um, between Supernode and Supernode and Lighthouse, um, we, can sync. we can sync. Yeah. Uh, we just don't have checkpoint checkpoint sync yet. We're working on. And if, for example, as I as I wrote in the chat, we can sync between super node and full node, but only from Genesis on the PeerDAS branch. And we have a branch which is called Fix PeerDAS uh, Discovery, on which uh, yes, uh, Prism is able to to sync uh, full node and super node uh, node from Genesis for so so running. Uh, when starting uh, after Genesis. Okay, so, uh, after Genesis, does that just mean like from a some checkpoint? No, 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 no. Uh, um, it, it syncs from from Genesis, but uh, uh, so, sorry, I don't know exactly the exact word for that. I think there is one. There is one. You just you you start a new node uh, when the network is already running, but not from okay. a checkpoint. Okay. Okay. I see. That makes sense. Maybe it worked for my checkpoint thing, but uh, I didn't. I did not check actually. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so is that the same for Teku as well? I'm not sure. We have not tested it for a while. It, it worked before, but I'm not sure uh, with the current build. We should test it. Uh, it worked. Mm -hmm. It worked like two weeks ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so it's currently uh, a bit unknown as to whether the one super node and one full node uh, currently works, uh, but it was working uh, two weeks ago. So, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. If mm -hmm. if sync in the middle, uh, if if it starts in the same time, no issues, uh, definitely. But uh, the sync, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah, thank you. Other topics around the snake?
uh, if not, then any uh, speak discussion. If not, any open topics here. Yeah, um, I want to discuss the the bottlenecks of you know uh, computing KCG proofs for PRDAS in comparison to FOID four four. So right now in mainnet, um, the blob KCG, KCG proofs are committed uh, are computed in the EL and are fetched by the CL you know when proposing a block, but with PRDAS. Uh, this thing, uh, this path is basically uh, done in the CL while it is building a block. So even with you know just six blobs, you you could reasonably expect it to take you know up to one second just to compute uh, the cells and all these proofs. With how mainnet is running right now, do you guys think it's reasonable to? have potentially such a large lag before you know you can broadcast the columns out into the network um i i have two questions um first of all why did you mention which layer does what like for the purpose of this discussion what does it matter whether the proofs are computed by the el or cl apart from uh, yeah i guess that's my first question um yeah so the reason i'm bringing up uh, uh the fact that it's computed in the el is because it is out of the critical path so like you know let's say it's a time to propose a block and you know i fetch the block transactions from the el the el has all the commitments and proofs ready to go. I don't have to do anything from the CL's point of view. So I just, you know, uh, do an engine call, get all, uh, the blob bundle, and pack it into a block, and then you know, just broadcast it out. So with PRDAS, uh, it this changes. You know, we, we get the blobs from the EL, but we have to, you know, again compute uh, all the cell proofs. So and th these, this is not cheap. Right? So if you have six. Right. Yeah, six blobs, it, it can take a while. Yeah, 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 I, I understand it. Okay, I see. It just, uh, I was wondering because, you know, if uh, this is an expensive operation in general, it doesn't matter whether it happens on the EL or CL because maybe you did your engine call and you got nothing. When, so I was just wondering why we're discussing it from this lens. Now, with regards to the time, I think we also touched on this. Uh, may maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm getting this wrong. But I, I feel like we touched this on the previous call as well, where uh, Fr Francesco was making a point uh, on that the blobs are arriving even from the previous slot. So you can start off like work already. It's you, you don't have to do the work in the critical four seconds window. You can pre-work. Pre on the blobs you've been receiving on the mempool. Does this make sense? Didn't we discuss this last time as well? I mean, it, it, I, I understand that, but like from the CL's point of view, how would I do that? You know. So like, uh, let's say that there's a blob that comes, you know, to the execution mempool and it's, it's there. How do I, you know, before I, I know, the time to propose is, you know, next slot. So how do I know that I have to compute proofs for these specific blobs? I see. Okay, I actually don't have a good answer to this. Uh, however, <laughs> it, it feels like um, it, it has moved the uh, with this observation, we're moving from a I don't have enough time for compute problem to a what is the right 
API problem? Am I am I right on that or? Um... Well, well, I, I guess um, you could you could frame it that way, but wouldn't this be better to be done in the uh, EL, you know, rather than? I CL? see. Mm -hmm. I see. Because we are already we are we're doing this right now, you know, with four eight four four blob proofs are computed and verified in the EL, and with mm. PRDAS, we us we 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 were taking this all out and you know we're mm -hmm. putting this in the CL, so it is kind of a you know big change. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I I I see I see why you're. I see why you're saying this. You're saying this because you're like, okay, the EL sees the blobs at the earliest time possible. Why doesn't it spend the compute then? But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I will have to think about this because Because it yeah, feels no. like even though the EL takes the has the information earlier, the CL has knows which blobs should be computed. Like otherwise, the EL just has to do everything kind of. Or I'm not sure actually. My my knowledge kind of runs limited here of how this should be done. But it is worth discussing. Yeah, so I think I think the um, yeah the idea to compute um, the proofs um, in advance is interesting. Um, we have actually explored that, um, but like I said, it could potentially be a bit of waste if the block transaction doesn't get included. Um, the other experiment I've been doing, I think I mentioned in the last call, is the um, distributed block building. Um, I think it's probably not a good name for it because <laughs> um, it, it 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 seems a bit confusing how that solved this problem. But um, th th this approach, we also fetch a blob from the EL mempool. Um, so whenever we uh, um, we receive a block from a peer, that's like a new block, and we can fetch the the blob from the EL mempool. And then once we get all the blobs, we can immediately make the block available. And then um, and then for the supernode, they could even compute the Darkon sidecars and, and publish up the network um, to help with the uh, the proof building, the so supernova should, should have better resources and bandwidth to propagate it quicker than like than any regular nodes. Um, but the older nodes can can try, also try to fetch blob from the from the EL mempool. If it's already there, then can, they can immediately make make their make their um, the block available. And um, that's the that's the experiment that we've been doing with sixteen blobs and, and thirty two blobs, and it seems to work pretty well so far at the moment. With local testing, um, we're hoping to do a bit, a bit more um, realistic testing, more nodes and um, distributed setup. Yeah, so like, like the issue with you know, you know, having this super node wait for it is that you have this four second critical path, and and no matter how uh, you know highly powered the node is, it, you still have to wait for it to basically compute all these proofs and you know send it out all in time. So. Um, it would be better um, if, you know, if we, we, we can like compute the proofs outside, you know, the block proposal time, because that is what happens right now with, you know, in mainnet. Yeah. I see. Okay. Um, yeah, um, it feels like, I, I agree with you, it feels like what we have right now is not very well suited to use the advantage of the blobs coming earlier, basically. It, it feels like there is at least two approaches here. One is <clears throat> the, the, the one you're kind of suggesting where the EL, the EL does the KCG computations, and then when the CL asks it at the block proposal window, the CL receives everything prepared, basically. And so the CL does not need to do anything. I think this is what you're suggesting. 
the other is yeah this is for period uh, uh, oh, sorry sorry oh no sorry sorry kev i thought you were referring to something else um okay the other approach is some sort of hmm, api thing which i cannot really think about right now where the cl can ask for blobs ahead of time and the cl still does the proof computation i don't know which one makes more sense i also agree the first one looks a bit simpler but it feels like these are at least two ways we can exploit the earlier time window, right? Does this make sense? Yeah, I mean, um, both uh, the solutions, you know, would make sense. Although for the first one, I suspect um, we would need like buy-in from all the EL client teams on to do that, right? So that might be yeah, a for tricky sure. thing. Um, I'm guessing the second one might be easier because uh, in some ways we already do this right now. So f basically from the CL's point of view, if we know we have to propose a block, let's say in the next slot, you know, we send a call to the engine and the engine prepares a payload. You know? So if in that time, you know, we can also find out which blob transactions are, you know, most likely to be included um, you know, we can just build the proofs beforehand before it's time for us to propose on the CL. But it, it requires um, some sort right. of, yeah, yeah it, it requires some sort of API where the CL can you know, see, okay, um, these are the most high value block transactions in the right. main pool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know which solution is best, uh, neither in terms of complexity nor in terms of, you know, um, more uh, economic advantage, basically. So uh, let me discuss this later on with Francesco and other people who understand that side better. And uh, I can report back what was discussed, if that works for you. OK, great. Kev, it doesn't seem like we will need the CL blob mempool. I think it may, I think the two solutions we're discussing is both in both of them, the EL gets the blobs and then passes them to the CL. But uh, in different times and maybe different, like in one case, the EL prepares the proofs beforehand and the other not. I don't feel like there is a need for blob mempool, if I get it right, if I'm getting this right. All right. Hmm. OK, I see. Um, so we'll move it to offline discussion. And do we have any open topics to discuss today? Uh, yeah, just one housekeeping thing. Uh, Barnabas is on vacation this week as well as next week. So if you guys need something, let me know. Um, I'm not fully up to date with PRDA stuff, but I'll try my best. Thank you, Perry. Um, I had a general question to CLs about how they control thread resources. Um, is it basically just deploy as many threads as possible and have the scheduler um, figure out what's the best way to sort of handle the resources? Um, I, I've, I looked at a few code bases and I couldn't see anywhere that was like explicitly saying this thing should only use five threads or something like this. Well, for Golang, it'd be done by the Go runtime. So 
for us, it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You just spin up a go routine and um, do whatever you need to do. And then it's, it's it shifted off the, into another thread. Maybe right. for, I think, other languages, it might be a bit more explicit. Yeah, so for Lighthouse, we, um, we we currently don't have this uh, explicit um, allocation of um, the how many threads we want to use for the computation. Um, I think that's something we, we kind of wanted to have in the future, to have more control over the, like, um, the resource allocation. Because at the moment, um, in Lighthouse, we have this scheduler that um, basically allocates uh, threads to different tasks. But the KCG computation is currently on its own, and it can it can do whatever you want at the moment. So, um, at 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 some point, we'll probably want to have some control over it. But at this moment, there's there's, there's no explicit allocation. Right. Okay. Um, Fred Tacker. In Taco, we calculate how many cores available and and use uh, some function uh, uh, to, to, to use part of them for the threads, but we don't use uh, in KZG parallelism for block production yet. We use it only for, for recovering the extended matrix uh, when we have uh, uh, more than 50 percent of data columns and want to restore a whole matrix. Uh, we plan to add uh, parallelism uh, for block production. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and I guess for Lodestar, I don't know if JavaScript allows you to have the same access like that. Access to like what? Uh, to control the number of threads um, for a particular function. Uh, I don't think so. But uh, I think uh, we, if there is an underlying library, if, uh, if there is, for example, nappy uh, kind of execution that is happening uh, in the in the in the uh, in the library, then maybe over there one can figure out how many threads are there. But I think uh, Matthew will be. Uh, more knowledgeable on this, and I think you are in touch with him, Kev. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Any other open topics? Well, I've just mentioned one in the chat. There's a um, open consensus spec PR on clarifying the usage of the execution get block v1 endpoints. Um, I'm not sure if if, um, if there's an if, if everyone's looked at this yet, um, but it's been uh, been there for a while, so I want to see if, if there's any any um, feedback on this and whether we could include this. Because um, I feel like that's quite um, critical if we want to. I mean. If we don't have a solution to the, the problem that we were discussing earlier regarding doing the proof earlier, um, this this is the alternative where we, we the CEOs could just fetch the blob from the, the EO mempool and immediately make the block available in, the, in their view. So I think this could be useful if we want to ship peer data for increased block count. Uh, I had a question. So for this engine API call, does it only retrieve the commitment that you ask for it, can you like ask it for all the blobs? Um, I think at the moment it's just, it takes, um, I think, uh, version hashes. And so if you have the case commitments and you can, you can derive the version hashes and we get both the vision API to get the blob. So you can't just get any, um, any blob. Oh, okay. Because if there was a way to also like, you know, get, all or you know a subset of like the highest value blobs you know it would fit like i guess the situation we we're discussing earlier yeah i think that's being explored but it's it's a bit more um involved because um at the moment the CLN doesn't know much about the transactions um 
we could like if we really need to we could like the, the EL can could expose an endpoint that allows the fetch floor by transaction ID but the EL doesn't currently know anything about transactions gotcha So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get some metrics on um, how quick um, other nodes can um, can make the uh, the block testable and available before waiting for a dark or a card to arrive. And hopefully, we have something in the next couple of weeks. Well, like for reconstruction, um, the numbers I've seen it, it takes quite a while. So, like, what numbers are you seeing with Rust KZG? Um. I think it's mostly around for sixteen blobs. It's it's, it's around five hundred millisecond to one to one second. Um, we don't have a more granular um metric, but at the moment it's, it falls between five hundred millisecond to one second, um, for sixteen blobs. And um, I think with this change, we we might actually do less of this construction because most most of the nodes that get the block from the EO mempool will be doing the compute cells um call instead of reconstruction. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, by the way, um, I think, um, so we've got a, um, Michael's got an open PR on ref uh, for the execution API, and it looks like the other mines also already merged their changes. So if anyone wants to test it out, um, there are at least two clients that you can test with. Thank you, Jimmy. So any other topics for today? Okay, thank you for attending. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thanks.